the big silence ever in my life when I was around the table with my uh, bank account people and said, okay, can I have some more money? They said like, okay, I will. we were able to give you maybe 50 grand more. So, okay, I will try, not enough. And I just decide, okay, I will go all in. It says I have like five credit cards. I have like around $120,000 limit on all my cards. So I just decided to fill my card. So I fill my cards at the top. At the end, I was paying my card with my cards. So like I was paying my card with my card because I was just about to bankrupt. Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast, brought to you by Sound Talent Media, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians to talk about their lives, music, and craft beer. I hope you guys have been having a great week. I hope you've been having an excellent February so far. I most certainly have been, because this is Vox and Hops' Sober February, where all of the content of this month is focused on having a balanced relationship with alcohol, which is something that I think is very important and something that I would like uh, to spread the word about. So that is exactly why I am doing Sober February for the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast. Before we jump into today's episode, I would love to ask you guys to subscribe to the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast on the podcast platform of your choice because uh, I don't want you to miss a single episode. But more than that, you can also take the time to rate it and write a review because when you do that, more people just like yourself will be able to discover the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast. And this small favor is something that I would greatly appreciate. Don't forget, I also just launched the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast mailing list. You can sign up to that by going to my website, that is voxandhops.com. That is V-O-X-A-N-D-H-O-P-S.com. And when you are prompted, join the party, sign up to the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast mailing list. When you do that, you shall receive one email a week containing all of the details about the episodes which dropped that previous week. But not only that, you will also get the link to the brand new Brutal Awakenings playlist, which is available on both Apple Music and Spotify and is curated by my man, Jerry Monk, the metal architect himself. He spends each Friday scouring the internet, trying to find the coolest, heaviest, most extreme, most interesting brand new music for us to enjoy in the Brutal Awakenings playlist. I love Jerry Monk and he knows what's going on. So if you are looking for something to listen to, something that is new and exciting, trust me, the Brutal Awakenings playlist is exactly what you want to be listening to. So take the time, sign up to the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast's mailing list. Trust me, I'm not going to spam you. I know how annoying that is, and that is not what this is about. I just want to make sure that you guys aren't missing a single thing that is going on in the world of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast. On today's episode, I am with two amazing humans who work at uh, a place where I have conducted countless interviews for the Vox and Hops Metal podcast. Of course, this was before the pandemic, and you guys know this if you've listened to any of my back catalog. Whenever there was a gig downtown Montreal, I would go and take my friends and walk them over from the venues that they were playing that night, whether it was at the Metropolis, now M. Telus, at Fofon Electric, at Club Soda, we would walk together and go and hang out and share a brew at one of my favorite, favorite brew pubs on St. Denis Street, downtown Montreal. Of course, I'm talking about Le Saint-Buc Brasserie Artisanale. So this is it, people. I'm very stoked. Get ready for my chat with Martin Guimont, the owner of Saint-Buc Brasserie Artisanale, and their fantastic head brewer, Philippe Tremblay. This is Vox and Hops, episode number 227. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, I'm with Philippe Tremblay, the head brewer of Saint-Buc Brasserie Artisanale, and I'm with Martin Guimont, the owner of Saint-Buc Brasserie Artisanale. If any of you have listened to a Vox and Hops episode before, you absolutely know that I love Saint-Buc, and I have done countless, countless interviews there before. 
COVID hit us and the pandemic shut everything down. Uh, how are you guys doing? How are you doing today? Very good. Very good today. Um, quite busy as uh, since March, I would say. Uh, because of COVID, we, uh, we had to... Uh, to do a million things to survive, you know, trying new, new, uh, new business uh, thing. Uh, and um, one of that is producing like uh, non-alcoholic beers and uh, kombucha as well. So. That's amazing. How about you, Martin? How was this whole horrible year of 2020? It is now behind us, but how did you cope with it? Yeah, 2020 was really the hardest year of my life. Absolutely. Uh, it was, you know, absolutely insane. Like in, in, like in 24 hours, like in March 15 or 14 or something like that, the world has changed. And first, first of all, we were just like wondering like, oh my God, what happened? What happened now and what we will do? So it takes like a few weeks, but while this time we're doing a lot of work here at the brewery, uh like uh, like uh, we have like to clean or something like that so while because at the first time we were uh, thinking like uh, we'll probably be shut down for maybe four five six weeks not for four months and since that you know about the switch the situation has changed so we that what we we had to do is like to work a lot actually phil and why phil and me were we're probably working something around like 80 hours a week. Wow. And we changed like the business uh, model because we can't do any more like a brew pub. So it means we have to figure how to work in the, my, the real microbrewery industry. So it's a lot of big change. And of course, it's not super easy when you have like to manage like two different ways of your business. But that's what happened, and yeah, we're still working, and we're, we're actually really proud about what we did, so, yeah. That's amazing, it's amazing, and, and honestly, for anyone that's at home that doesn't know, uh, the Saint Buck is probably one of Montreal's most popular brew pubs in all the time. It's always packed. It, it doesn't matter if it's the winter, if it's the summer, if the summer, there's even just more people there because there's the patio at front, La Terrasse, which is just packed with people. And you guys brew on site, which is right behind you. You're in the brew room right now, the fermenters behind you, um, making beers, especially for the brew pub. You guys have a contract brewing to get beers out onto the craft beer scene here, but it's not brewed here and it's completely different. So you guys had to be extremely, extremely creative this year. So t talk me down some of, through some of the things that you have done this year to stay alive, to stay afloat, to keep moving forward with the, the, uh, the business of Le saint Uh First of all, you know, uh, while the COVID happened, uh, happened, we were not allowed to sell alcohol outside like in Dippener and uh, grocery stores. So it was like a kind of hard. So we just, we like all of the other group ups, so we sales or beer. Uh, directly at the bar. So it helps, a, a few, you know, a kind of bit, but it's not a lot of sales. So it's, it's pretty hard. It's, it, it doesn't pay the rent. So while this time we had like to have like an image and create something new. So we just decide to, because maybe as some people know, uh, we actually, we have our beer in the grocery store in Depanar, but it's like, it's not exactly the same. Like if it was, it's the recipe of saint -Buck and everything is, is brewed there uh, to Brasseur du Monde, like saint -Buck would like this beer would, uh, could be brewed. But because it's not, the, uh, the beer is not brewed on the purposes here at the saint -Buck, so it means if us want to sell also beer outside of the pub, uh, even if it's like uh, with or without alcohol, it means it could confuse like people. So it means what happened, you have beer from saint Buck who has been brewed to Brasseur du Monde and beer from saint Buck who has been brewed to the saint Buck. So what the difference? Who I should call to get some? And <laughs> what happened if something happened? I don't know, maybe if they don't like the beer, but it kind of super confusing. So that's what, but actually what we, we had to do is like to just like found a new name for a new brewery. It calls the Bazard, Bazard Brewing Company, Bazard Microbrasserie. And it says like Bazer, but if you look on the on the side, you will you will see it. It, it says like brewed at the same bar Brasserie Artisanale, so exactly like the Brasserie. So we had to do that, and 
because we were not able to sell beer with alcohol, so we just decided to take another way. Another way was sometimes the other brewery don't really use. So we decided uh, with uh, Philip because Philip is uh, the, the the head brewer of the brewery and he uh, is that one who created this incredible recipe. So we decided to brew like a non-alcoholic uh, North uh, New England IPA. So actually, I think people they are really like it, and we are really proud of that. And we are actually using that. But since three weeks, now we are able to sell beer with alcohol. <laughs> so it's a new game we have to be in. So. Yeah. Uh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. You guys just, just figured out what the hell you were going to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, the world slaps you with something new again. Uh, actually, uh, in somewhere in June, we we had that idea to produce like non-alcoholic beer. And we, we said to us like, oh God, we never touched that kind of thing before. And, but we, we might do the best New England IPA, non-alcoholic in the world. <laughs> C'était ça le défi. So, so, but I'm, I'm pretty, we are pretty, pretty proud of, that new uh, Wow uh, New England IPA non-alcoholic. Exactly. So, that's right. That's yeah. right. Speaking I, of the little devil, here it is. I got it in my hand. So <laughs> it is from Bazaar Brasserie Artisanal, yep. which is brewed at Le Saint-Barc Brasserie Artisanal, which makes me very excited. It is a New England IPA with no alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, let's crack. Do you guys have some on your side so we can share one? I can bring, yes, of course. I can. If you have two of this, I can go and bring some. I think we should do this. Yeah, yes, I'll, I'll keep chit-chatting with you, uh, Philip. I'll dig in. Merci, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Philip, tell me all about yep. this. I, I want that whole conversation of yep. realizing that you're going to have to mm -hmm. explore non-alcoholic beer, which yep. is something that you've never done before. Uh, yeah. Uh, How did you play with this? Where, where, what, what steps did you take to get to this beer? To, uh, first of all, I, I did a masterclass in a kombucha uh, producer. Uh, in 2018, 2019. And, um, and I founded the company, the La Bête Lumineuse, a kombucha company here. But uh, I introduced some that culture into that non-alcoholic project. That's very creative. Uh, instead yeah. of just taking away from what beer is, yeah. you've added to it. Because a lot of these non-alcoholic beers that I've been trying and tasting, is basically yeah. a beer with something missing. So you've added something, you've combined things, which is very interesting. Sure, sure. It's all about micro fermentation uh, <laughs> to fight against nature, <laughs> you know, not having 0.5% of alcohol. Yes. So, yeah, it's very, very hard. Very, I, I would say unstable because it's unfiltered. It's unpasteurized, full flavor. Uh, so we say always keep it cold. Keep it cold for freshness. Keep it cold for the taste. Uh, it, it's a it's an amazing thing. Actually, I'm really proud of this beer because you know when you drink sometimes the uh, mother non-alcoholic beer, sometimes you don't have the feeling. You know, that feeling was just like, oh my God, I'm satisfied. I drank a beer. Yep. I drank something like, oh my God, it's full flavor. Sometimes you have this, it's just like, yeah, not so bad for an non-alcoholic beer. <laughs> so, mm, not so bad. And it's always like that. But it, with this one, when you drink it, you have the feeling like, oh my God, I think, yeah, of course I drank a beer. <laughs> and non-alcoholic. So that's why I'm super proud because you have this feeling to, to drink a real Awesome. Let's, let's crack it open. Let's pour it out. Yeah, sure. sure. Beautiful, nice little body. Oh, those same buck glasses. I missed them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll bring you one. Cheers, Sate. Cheers. Cheers. It smells fantastic. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean with the, 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 the relationship to kombucha. The, the beery body and the multi finish. 
Very interesting. Very interesting. So, so how, how many steps did you go through to get to this? One? <laughs> uh, first of all, it was uh, how to do it. Mm. Th there's many ways to do a non-alcoholic beer. Uh, I have a friend that works at the, the Labo Solution Brassicole. Uh, they, are, they have developed a new kind of non-alcoholic yeast. So I tried the first one that might apply for a New England IPA. And uh, then, <laughs> and then I, I try a low gravity work. Uh, put a shitload of hop at the end of the boil and a massive dry hop. Nice. Two massive dry hop for this. And uh, yeah, actually, and uh, verifying every hour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is it fermenting? Is it fermenting too much? Uh, but it, it, it quite, the, the yeast did quite a good job that so excellent it's it's, it's delicious it, it, it really it is here we had to uh thanks yeah to do thank you so much and yeah to brew this beer you know it, it i know it was complicated and we don't realize that in only one shot we have to do a few <laughs> a few to be able to to have exactly the same thing we, mm. we have actually but yeah excellent excellent uh let's let's step back and go back in time i want to hear your brewer stories um, where did you guys set out, start out? Why do you guys brew beer? Uh, let's start with Philip. Why do you brew beer? Why are you now <laughs> doing all of this creation into non-alcoholic yeah. beer? <laughs> well, I, 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 being a brewer in a brew pub is one of the best job you can ever have uh, when you have uh, plenty uh, space to create things. So a big, big thank you to Martin that let me all the creativity I want. So, uh, and with the experience, I'm, I think that uh, we, we do a good symbiose to uh, produce very good beers for the pub. And then now, from now on, on grocery stores and uh, everywhere, you know? So yeah, uh, it's creative. It's beer. Um, sometimes we're like <laughs> heroes in parties, like yay! It's a, uh, and we we are not saving lives. Uh, <laughs> we it's not a stressful job. It's an exciting job, you know. Mm. Uh, for me, it can uh, always moving because it's quite physical job. Yeah, water, water grain it weighs something it weighs it weighs something you know and uh well there's a thing about creativity it's uh all the fermentation process so the nature gave us plenty of different kind of microorganisms that transform all the molecules and atom yeah of uh, fruit, uh, cereal juices, uh, whatever, you know? And with time, we domesticate it a little bit. And uh, now it's so, so fun to play with all these kind of strain of yeast and bacteria. Mm -hmm. So for beer, kombucha, the rest. It's amazing. It's amazing. I hang out with rock stars all the time, but <laughs> me being with brewers, you guys are my rock stars, people that I look up to that I'm excited to be around. <laughs> so I, I, it's a privilege of mine to be tonight and to taste something so, so fresh, so juicy. There's the pineapple in this and you can definitely smell it on the nose and taste it in the body. It's, it's really, really good. Um, how about you, Martin? How did you end up owning one of Montreal's coolest brew pubs? Oh my God, if you go back in time, oh my God, uh, something like um, uh, 2000, 2004, maybe before that, maybe go back in time more than that. Like in um, early uh, 2000s, 
I was only drinking like a Budweiser, Molson, something like that, probably even like 1997 uh, and 96. So I had like a roommate. Uh, he bring me in a, in a bar in Montreal and he told me, I think I, I want you to try something. Okay, what do you want me to try? I, will, I, I want you to try like a Kilkenny beer. If you don't like it, I will pay it and drink it. Like, hmm. <laughs> okay, it's a good I'll deal. try. I said, okay, it's not so bad. Okay, I want you to try another one. Okay, what do you want me to try? I want you to try a Buddington. Okay, okay. Uh, if you don't drink it, if you don't like it, I will, I will drink it and I will pay it. Like, okay, I will try. So I said, okay, it's not so bad. The last one I said, we'll try something different. Okay, what? Um, we will try to, uh, I, I will make you try, we'll make you drink uh, a Guinness. Like, no way, no, I won't drink Guinness. No, it's, 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 it's okay for tonight. Uh, I'll take a bud and we'll be super fine. Like, no, okay, if you don't like it, I'll drink it and I'll pay it. Okay, and I said, this was not so bad. So <laughs> that makes me really curious about beer. It's, yeah, of course, it was like 1996, uh, uh, 1997. And like from, the, from this time, I began to discover beer and try to go to a uh, judicial at this time and also to Sergent Recruiter, who actually does, doesn't, is not open anymore. And I just like, I went, uh, I just like, uh, I enter like in, the, in that new world of beer and I said, oh my God, it's so absolutely amazing. More than that, um, I had like a job in Quebec City. I was a communication and marketing manager for, the, for Quebec City. And I was like a super big lover at this time. So I just decided, of course, to brew my beer by myself at home. And when my contract has finished in 2005, 2006, so I was like, okay, actually my contract is over. I have a few free times. So I will just write down like a business plan and I want to start my own business, wow. my own brew pub. And I did my business plan. Uh, it took me like, uh, like a long time because it's like big like that. And <laughs> it was really hard like at this time to, uh, to do a business plan. Actually, it's easy. You have so many breweries, so you have statistics. But in, two, in, 2006, in 2006, I won't be able to find any statistics about the brew pub in Quebec and breweries even. So uh, I just decided, okay, I'm, I'm, I will do it. So I asked to my parents if they has money to own me. It took super hard. Uh, and my father said, okay, uh, I will not give you, but we, because you will have to refund me, but I will just like uh, pass you like, like something like $28,000 and my mother 20, 27. It was not a lot. So, I, just, I took like all the money I had in my lap and I was like really poor. Uh, I just took back my, uh, sorry about that, in English, Maria. Your RRSPs. Yeah, okay. And I just like take it, all that money back and I decided, okay, I'll do it. I will realize my life, my, my dream. Wow. I found a place. I, found, I, I visit many places. I found a place. And while I was uh, building the, uh, the Saint Buck, at, at, one, at one time, I, I didn't have any more money. I was like almost bankrupt. Like, okay, what can I do? The bar is almost finished, maybe three-fourths, and I don't have any more money. So it was the big, the big silence ever in my life when I was around the table with my, uh, with my uh, bank account people and okay can I have some more money they said like okay I will we were able to give you maybe 50 grand more said, okay I will try not enough and I just decide okay I will go all in it says I have like five credit cards wow. I have like around one hundred twenty thousand dollars limit on all my cards so I just decided to fold my card. So I fold my cards at the top. At the end, I was paying my card with my card. Wow. <laughs> like I was paying my card with my card because I was just about to bankrupt. And while this time, uh, someone knocked at the door. It says, 
hello, my name is Philip. Can I come to the bar and help you to build your brewery? So, yes, of course, I think I will be the help. So that's the first time I met Philip. Like, that that was 14 know? years ago. <laughs> no, I, see, I didn't know that that had happened. That's so yeah. interesting. Yeah. So Philip, he just introduces uh, uh, himself like that. So he went to the bar and we met together and he helped me to paint the wall and to fix and to build. And... Yep. And after that, uh, two other things happened. Um, I was not able to open, even if I was ready. So I was not able to, to get my... Uh, my alcoholic uh, permit, my license. And I don't know why what happened, but uh, you know, it was always something was missing. They lost something, something has not arrived. And it was, it, you know, six months to get an alcoholic permit. It's the license, it's, it's worse, it's, it's too long. So I just decided to call the uh, Journal de Montréal. So I had an article and the day after I had my permit. No way. So, yes. So that's why in St. Buck, we opened the St. Buck uh, October 13th, uh, 2006, the 13th brewery in the Montreal area. Wow. And while just, I was just open and I got a call from Quebec City and they said, Martin, you remember me? I'm the guy, uh, the communication manager for, from Quebec City. Yes, yes, of course, of course. I have the job of your dream. <laughs> okay, what? You will be the first, um, I don't know the word in English, but the first civil. A civil. Uh, civil, yeah, the word civil. You will be the communication and marketing manager of the police department of Quebec City. Like, really? Okay, I will give you like a big salary. I want you to think it today. I want an answer tomorrow, and I want you in Quebec City next, next Saturday. We will pay your move. Like, Okay, what I can do? Actually, I have a bar. You know, 2006, it was super quiet <laughs> in the beer industry. And at this time, the brewer here, it was Dominique Chardonneau from, from uh, Brassard Mount, actually. We just talked together and says, what can I do? Maybe I should go to Quebec and take the job and take my salary to pay the bar because it's super quiet, it will be super hard. And I just decided, okay, no, no, no. If I'm leaving the boat, I won't be anymore the captain inside, so I have to be here to manage my place. If I want the bar go in the way I want the bar to go. So I refused the job and since this time. Uh, I think it was like the better thing. But in my mind, I always this thing like it was like a junction like in my life. So it, it, I would like to see me like in the other way. <laughs> <laughs> I choose the way of beer because I love beer. I'm talking uh, about beer like every day. I'm the, I love the beer industry. It's a funny industry. People love that. And you know, it's, it's always super nice to talk beer. So I'm a beer lover and it's my passion. And yeah, that's fun. Wow, what an incredible story. <laughs> All in for your passion and love. Um, anyone listening at home, do like Martin, put, go all in, but but succeed like Martin did as well. And I also think it's super interesting that that Philip was there for you when you needed him the most at the beginning, someone to believe in you and to help you. And look, you know, got you guys went apart for a moment, and then you guys came right back together, right when you needed to be together the most again to tackle a pandemic. And we uh, both love our, our job. It's nice, it's, you know, love what you do, and you won't work anymore. It's amazing. It's absolutely <laughs> amazing. Um, maybe I, wanna... I can um, maybe I can uh, tell you a little about the, the genesis of a brewer. Yes, please. Uh, for, for myself, uh, I was a home brewer like every brewer in, in this craft beer industry. Um, I, I finished my studies in uh, actually uh, in the geography at Lucam. I was a cartographer. Yeah, a cartographer. Yeah, Cart cartographer. Um, and then after, after a, a year and a half, uh, there were not enough money. So, uh, I was unemployed and I decided like, okay, I, I'm going to Belgium to learn the art of brewing beer wow. professionally. So I did that. I, <laughs> I, I've been in Belgium. I brewed beer, uh, with a little stage in uh, Brussels. 
Um, and then I met a lot of people, had a girlfriend there about a year. And then I came back here um, in Montreal and I, I had two, two ways, the geographer or the brewer. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I worked for uh, Les Brasseurs du Nord for uh, a year. And it was a, a magnificent school, but uh, at that time it wasn't. Uh, it was a, it was a big industry, and there was not a, no place for creativity, you know. And then um, in those days, I I were I uh, I worked for Benelux, but in between I. I gave, I gave a hand to Martin to start the sandbox. So after eight years at the Benelux, I, I worked a year in construction. And then after that, uh, a couple of years uh, for Opfenstark. Yes. Station host. And then uh, sandbox. <laughs> <That's> so, amazing. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about 2021, where you think this crazy year is going to take us. Beer wise, <laughs> let's just focus on the beer. What yep. what is going to be the next big thing in beer? What are you guys going to focus on now? You guys are allowed to sell alcoholized beers to depeneurs to craft beer stores. Uh, so so what what is you what are you guys going to be focusing on? What do you think is going to be the most interesting things in twenty twenty one beer wise? You want to go, Phil? No, yeah, okay. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> uh, uh, like I said, like it's it's a new game for brew pub. I don't know how many brew pub we are in province of Quebec. I just know about breweries, but we are on all in the same like uh, in the same boat. But that that laws was changed like a few uh, a few weeks ago. It says like actually you will have I don't know maybe 20, 20 30 maybe forty new players in the game in the same time and no more shelves. Mm -hmm. So it means you have to brew something really nice, really different if you want to be like on the shelves of the depender because it's hard, you know. Actually, we called some places like, oh, do you want or IPA? No, no actually, I have 40, I have 40 IPA. Oh, you want like or a New England IPA, the regular one? Like, I have like 60 New England IPA. So it means why yours? Mm -hmm. It means we, we will have like to be different. And for, that's why actually we are uh, in the non-alcoholic uh, game, beer, non-alcoholic beer game. I think it, it, it's, it's, um, it's a kind of beer who has not been totally explored again. And actually we're both working on different many IDs. Uh, just before the interview tonight, we were still like trying to test new, new, uh, new uh, flavors of things or you think, write down new IDs about beer. So, uh, I think it's for us. It's something really interesting, really different. Uh, like I said, it's a new game. Uh, but uh, I think for me, and I don't know for you, Philip, but uh, uh, maybe next summer, something like you know, like since like two, three years, like uh, session beer are quite popular. But I think we could do like session beer, but it'll be like lower in alcohol, between, between maybe two and three percent alcohol. I think it could be something nice, something nice for next summer. Many people actually are loving, they are loving session beer. Why? Because you can drink five and take your car. But yeah. one, you can drink eight. <laughs> <laughs> lower. But and the next day is, is not so bad. You have all the flavors and in, in everything, like something you are looking in a beer. It could be something interesting. Very interesting, and I agree mm -hmm. with you. I, I do think that sessions are, are are definitely definitely going to be a huge thing in twenty twenty one. Hey, toi, Philip, and you, Philip, what do you think? Uh, I would say uh, at first, like this, that uh, we I feel a little like exhausted for now, and it's very kind of day to day thing, you know. Uh, things are changing so fast so fast from week to week it's another story it's 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 crazy and uh i am exhausted but uh the passion for uh, aroma and uh, 
transformation by fermentation. Uh, from day to day, it's like, uh, what can I say? Um, um, some day it's like this idea, the other day it's like another idea. But if we're looking back uh, a few months, we created a lot of new beers, uh, kombucha, and it's all all great stuff, you know. So yeah, I think that in this summer, uh, like Nano IPA, Nano New England IPA, uh, something like that, and um, looking for Berliner Weisse. Uh, yeah, sure. Maybe Imperial Stout or uh, Triple uh, IPA that take <laughs> passes. Uh, so. so um, uh, we are, I feel exhausted, but excited too. So, uh, I know that it's just a period. So the best is, uh, in front of us and, uh, it, it's really excited. It's not exhausted. Like we will stop It's exhausted, but we are proud of ourselves because, uh, we survived <laughs> now and, uh, there's a lot of very big thing, things uh, coming up. Very so, cool, very uh, cool. I, I think that there will be a lot of new creative stuff. Uh, actually, we, it reminds me that we did a birbucha. I was just about uh, to ask, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a blend of a fruity beer with a the specific uh, uh, blend of bacteria and yeast culture, very, very acidic, very sour, perfectly blend together. That gave uh, La Fleo, the assemblage number one at the same box. So I'm quite proud of that that beer. So it's, it's kind of new, but it's very good. Awesome, awesome. I can't yeah, wait to beer, can't wait to try that. Yeah, beer bouchard is really amazing, actually. It's kind of really fruity. But of course, you know, province of Quebec is the I think it's one of the best places in the world to drink beer. It's crazy. <laughs> we, have, we have so many amazing poor brewers here who have a lot of imagination. Just imagine two years ago, three years ago, you never had that so many different kinds of beer. Just, you have actually the smoothie beer, you have all the, uh, the milkshake beers and everything like that. It's, it's crazy, it's new, and you have to take a risk for that. You know, it's hard to be the first sometimes to do something and you'll wait for the critics. If it's good, <laughs> you're cool. If it's not, you're bad. So, <laughs> they're not, you know, we are taking risks. The beer food show actually, uh, we brewed here at Sandbox with Philippe, is pretty amazing. I think that's very cool, and I think that's going to be something that is going to catch on because I think you're the first person I've heard say that. So I'm sure. The only thing we hope to be open, but you know, uh, just to be real realistic, uh, realist, like uh, you know, the big shutdown it will be until Saturday for uh, four weeks. But uh, actually, just to remind you guys, uh, bar uh, will reopen October 28, 2000, four weeks. So I think for <laughs> it won't be four weeks, it will be maybe eight, maybe 12, maybe 16. It, will, it, it means we, we, we don't know actually when we reopen. So hope guys, we will be able to come here, buy a beer, and maybe not, you can go to the dinner some, somewhere and buy some. Absolutely, absolutely. It's Vox and Hop, so we have to talk about metal. Yeah. Uh, have you guys, or do you listen to metal? And if you have, what bands do you love? Go ahead, Martin. <laughs> oh my God! Okay, we're talking about heavy metal. <laughs> you know, uh, I love heavy metal, and I have never, never heard that much heavy metal since I'm working with <laughs> Philip every day. <laughs> so we actually just think something like not, not not something really bad, just like eight, twelve hours a day of heavy. <laughs> something, something nice. And actually, uh, I was loving heavy metal, but 
since that I'm that one who says, oh yeah, Philip, do you know, do you remember this song? Can you, can you play it? Oh yeah, it's this one, yeah, go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I love it. <laughs> it's called that with Andy LaRock, you know? <laughs> oh, okay. Love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. New Philip? I, I have some uh, like 10 playlists of heavy metal since <laughs> Philip. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. Has, can you put heavy metal? Uh, the, the genesis of a headbanger, <laughs> a headbanger's journey. Yes, uh, well, my, my first cassette was a Top Gun uh, soundtrack. Yes. And uh, after that, I, I bought like Appetite for Destruction from Guns N' Roses and, uh, but, and the Flipper Hysteria. Uh, and I put the hand of uh, Live After Death, Iron Maiden. Since that day, I destroyed my Guns N' Roses stuff. <laughs> so vulgar and superficial. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Sorry about that, but Iron Maiden's my band, you know. Awesome. <laughs> and then uh, Sabbath, uh, and then Cradle of Filth, Dark Tranquility, uh, Opet, uh, Cryptopsy, <laughs> uh, Cryptopsy, and uh, um, there was a bunch of pretty good uh, metal band, uh, Auguri, yes. uh, all the Rimouski scene, and those guys, uh, Morgrain with Martyr, Mar yes, Martyr. Yes. Uh, Boivot now. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's metal is life. It, it, it gives us some uh, self-confidence. I love it. I love it. Uh, one last question. Uh, it probably never happens to you guys because you guys are very, very busy working many, many hours <laughs> for the past many weeks. But every once in a while, it happens to everyone, but not when you're drinking this. What is your <laughs> hangover cure? Cure? Yes. Hmm. Martin? <laughs> cure from, uh... Tell me your secret. Um, I think... Um... You know, um, I have some habits, so it means I can drink a lot. So uh, without to be sick, <laughs> even if more if it's if it's bad. Uh, I don't have a lot of hangover, but when I have some, what I do sometimes is like um, you take maybe two or three big water glasses before to go to sleep. Two mm -hmm. Advil, really important the Advil. And <laughs> you go to sleep and your girlfriend will tell you, my God, you were so sneezing last night. And <laughs> she was that, snoring, snoring last snoring, night. Sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. Snoring, sorry about that. And after that, uh, you uh, wake up yourself. Sometimes. Back in Boston? <laughs> yeah, oh my God, yeah, you're not too bad. So it means you have to take two more <laughs> glasses of water <laughs> and two more Advil. Some, after that, normally you're okay and you can go for more. <laughs> New Philip. Yeah, me. Uh, I, I'm not into like pills or something, but I, I'm not against that. Uh, but it's not my habit now. Uh, the, the best, the, the best thing is for me. I always uh, ride a bike. To come working, so it's a it's a good way to uh, <clears throat> to move to um, breathe. To, to do something good with the body and eliminate some undesired uh, things, you know, like a bad, bad alcohol from, <laughs> but, uh, bad things from too much alcohol the day before. Uh, I, would, I would say sports and uh, fresh air. Excellent, sweat it out. Yeah. The good thing is that I don't do that anymore. Not a lot because, you know, when I was younger, it was, more like that but actually yeah. i'm still young but uh, <laughs> more of myself. which is wise which is wise uh, martin philip thank you so so much for taking the time having a chat with me talking about your life talking about metal talking about craft beer um tell everyone where they can get these right now oh my god actually you will be able to find it probably almost like everywhere in all the beer the specialized beer store Excellent. Because actually, uh, we just like uh, send uh, like uh, a ton of tons of uh, cases of this beer. 
Excellent, excellent. That makes me very happy. Uh, thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right to the end. How cool is that? How cool is their tenacity, their creativity to totally change their business plan during a pandemic in order to survive, to keep it fresh, to keep people interested? It, it is crazy. I'm super proud. And, and I have to say that this wow, non-alcoholic New England IPA is honestly one of the best non-alcoholic New Englands that I have ever, ever drank. And I've been trying a lot of them recently because it is sober February for me. And I do still enjoy drinking beer. So I am drinking a bunch of non-alcoholic beer. And honestly, the wow from Le Bazar, also known as Le Saint-Buc, is, is phenomenal, delicious. It feels like a beer. And that is extremely satisfying without any of the alcohol-related consequences. So so massive cheers to Martin and Philippe. I am a huge fan, and I am super stoked to see where exactly you take us on this next non-alcoholic craft beer adventure. If you enjoyed this Vox & Hops episode, you should subscribe to it on the podcast platform of your choice. But not only that, please take the time to rate it and write a review, because when you do that, more people, just like yourself, will be able to discover the Vox and Hops podcast. And it is with your help that this podcast has grown so much, and I truly appreciate that. But by you doing this one extra thing, even more people will be able to find it and uh, hopefully love it as much as you and I do. Also, don't forget, sign up to the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast's mailing list, which is available on my website, voxandhops.com. That is V-O-X-A-N-D-H-O-P-S.com. When you do that, you will get one email a week with all of the details of everything that has happened that week in the world of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast, whether I have been a guest on another person's podcast, all of the details of the episodes which I have dropped that week. If there is a Thirsty Thursday live interview coming up the link for that will be available in that email and there will be the links to the updated brutal awakenings playlists curated by the metal architect jerry monk himself the vox and hops metal podcast is brought to you by sound talent media i will be back next week with three episodes one dropping on tuesday Another on Thursday, which is the live Thirsty Thursday interview, which I did with Keith Wampler, as well as one on Friday. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Please, until next week, remember to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Hops heads. Oh,